Hey, I'm Marcus of Cradle Cat, and if you're looking to optimize your file storage for music production, then keep on watching this video because that's exactly what we're going to walk through. In addition to getting the best performance from your setup, you'll also get some peace of mind with some of the backup options that we'll talk through as well. So diving right in here, this is a typical starting setup that you might have or might see. It's what I started with, and it involves just your main laptop or PC. And on that device, you have your operating system, your applications, so that's your DAW, such as Logic Pro, Pro Tools, FL, Ableton, anything like that. VSTs, plugins, so that might be your contact sampler, battery, serum, something like that. Sample or content libraries, so the sample libraries that some of those samplers or VSTs use, or your own custom sample library. And project files, so the actual songs or projects that you're saving from your DAW. So those are the big buckets of things that we're going to talk through and, and how to separate out. The setup that I'm going to talk through here that I would recommend and the one that I use today is having two external solid state drives and a couple options for backing up the most important work. Some reasons to switch away from that initial setup are, you know, as you're building out your sample library or you start using more VSTs or you just start saving more and more projects, there are going to be a couple things that you run into. One is going to be just storage space. So sample libraries take up a ton of space and you might run out of room on your laptop or it might start just bogging things down by having so much of the hard drive taken up. The other thing is a little more of a technical reason and honestly I don't completely understand it, but it is where you start to run into a bit of a bottleneck on read write operations for your laptop. And what I mean by that, for example, is when you're working on a project and you are playing an instrument, a virtual instrument, such as a piano from a contact library or a bass from Serum, you're reading the samples as you're playing it in. So your laptop's doing that in real time. And then in that same project, maybe you're playing that back and starting to record vocals in or record something that's mic'd like a guitar, you're then writing in an audio file to that project. So as you're building and playing back and recording into these projects, you're constantly reading and writing data to your drives. There's a limit to how much you can do at one time. And basically, my understanding is that by separating it out into separate hard drives, you gain overall bandwidth for how much of that you can be doing at the same time. So I'm sure there's a better and more in-depth explanation out there from a computer science YouTube channel, but that's the most that I've understood about it and all I'm going to dive into here. So all that to be said, the storage, just the storage of how much is on that hard drive and the increasing the overall bandwidth for that read write, we're going to move things around from this initial setup. And first, we'll have the sample and content library over here on one solid state external drive. And we'll have our project files over on a second external solid state drive. The exception that I make to this setup is my logic sample library. I have directly on my laptop still. And the reason for that is I want the ability to create something if I don't have my hard drives with me for some reason or if something happened to them. I want to be able to just open up my laptop and at least use the stock logic VSTs to create some music. So maybe it could be a little more optimized, but I sacrifice that to make sure I can always have something just with my laptop and nothing else. For the hard drives in this setup, I would also definitely recommend a solid state drive instead of a hard disk drive. This is because they're both faster and they are also quieter. So you won't have that whirring disk that might get picked up in some of your sensitive mics uh, that you would get in a hard disk hard drive. So again, all of the hard drives in this setup are solid state drives, both the internal one on the laptop or PC and both of the external drives. When you're connecting those external drives to your laptop or PC, also take a look at the cables that you're using to do so. Most are gonna be just fine, but if you're using a low quality one, you may see that there's a limit on 
how quickly data can be read or written to those hard drives. I'm personally using USB-C cables to connect those to a high quality docking station, which is connected to my laptop. Before I got that docking station, I was using a less expensive USB splitter. And as I started connecting more hard drives and more peripherals, such as the MIDI keyboard or my audio interface, um, I started running into just issues on all, all over the board for those things that were connected through it. And switching over to a higher quality docking station made all of those issues go away. So after we have this main setup for the drives and what information goes on each, we'll also talk through the backup options. If you're not backing up your projects, then please start doing that because it is uh, it would just be a tragedy to lose all that work and all those songs. So this is the option that I'm currently using and I'll talk through why. The project files, those are my most important files. Those are the songs, those are the music that's not yet completed and not yet out there. And if I lost those, I would be very upset. So that second hard drive in this diagram is the most important one to me. So I'm having that back up continually to a cloud storage solution. I'm personally using Google Drive. There are a lot of other options out there, but whenever I have it connected to my laptop and I have an internet connection, it will automatically keep that backed up in the cloud. One more note to add in here on cloud storage for your backups is when you're working on a project and you start recording things in or deleting things, that sort of thing, anytime you're doing that, as you can see here, it will start to try to sync those new files in real time. So just in an effort to minimize any extra tasks on your laptop or computer, I always just go ahead and make sure I pause syncing or uh, go ahead and quit the uh, backup application here. And this is what it looks like in Google Drive. It may look a little different on if, uh, if you're using some other solution, but go ahead and just quit or pause those to make sure that uh, it doesn't do that while you're working on a project and just turn it back on afterwards and it'll sync everything uh, to, the, to the end state of whatever session you're working on there. The second hard drive and the laptop, you'll notice are not connected to the cloud storage in this example here or in this layout. Uh, and that's by design for me at least. It may be a little different, and I'll talk through when that might be different or should be different for you. Uh, the solid state drive number one here, the sample content library. I'm using, you know, a lot of native instrument samples, um, a couple other sample libraries that are, uh, if I lost them, I would just re-download them. You know, I have a license to it, and I would just get a new hard drive and download it to that new hard drive. So I don't even have this backing up anywhere. <laughs> um, if I had, or if you have more uh, custom samples that you've curated over time or you've recorded over time and you have them on that hard drive, I would recommend backing that up to cloud storage as well because um, you know, basically any, anytime you have something that you would regret losing and you don't have an easy way to get it back, you should be backing that up. So uh, in that case, you know, I would definitely recommend drawing a little line here <laughs> over to that cloud storage as well. But in my case, I'm mainly just using sample libraries that I can easily re-download, so I don't have that. The laptop, again, I don't really have anything super important directly on my laptop. Those are all things that I can download again and set up again. And yes, it would be kind of a pain to go through that setup, so I do have it backing up just using Time Machine to an old uh, hard disk hard drive that I had. So I repurpose that to be my uh, my time machine backup. If you don't have another hard drive to use as a backup for your laptop or PC, or maybe you have more important files that you really don't want to lose on that laptop or PC, then absolutely you can have that laptop backup to a cloud storage solution as well. Um, that's definitely an option, and I'll draw down here just so we just so we know that that's there. So we went from having that single device set up with your laptop or PC having everything on it to just having your operating system, applications, VSTs, plugins, that sort of thing, still directly on that laptop. And we moved over your sample and content libraries to a second solid state external drive. And then your project files over to that third uh, solid state external drive. 
So we've got three hard drives here, all doing something helpful as you're building out your projects. And on the setup, if there's anything that would be catastrophic to lose, that's something that should be backed up. So for me, that was my project files, and I'm having that go up to my cloud storage solution. If you have your own custom samples or just other information on your laptop that you want to back up as well, I'd recommend doing that. Or you can always have a, if you have an extra hard drive, you could use that to back up your laptop if there's nothing super important. And that's what I'm personally doing. So now that we've walked through how to optimize your file storage for music production, if you're on Mac or a MacBook, it's also helpful to know how to best format those external drives so that they're optimized for Mac OS. I'll link that here and in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please subscribe, like, comment, let me know. I've been making these tutorial videos whenever I run across a question in my music production journey, and I hope you find them helpful as well. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.